So thank you everyone for tuning in to yet another episode in which I talk about issues related to public transit. And um, now this is going to be kind of meta, um, which is something, I, I guess there are a lot of people like being meta. I don't usually like being meta. Um, but um, I, I, I bring this up because in theory, this is a stream about La Sombrita, but it's not really a stream about La Sombrita. It's a stream about how people talk about and what lessons they draw from La Sombrita. So for people who do not know what La Sombrita is, uh, let me see if there are pick. Okay, this is a pick. This is another pick. La Sombrita is, is the following context. Los Angeles did a nice thing. La Sombrita is not a nice thing. The nice thing is that they decided they're going to do mass installation of shelter at all of the bus stops in the city. Uh, this appears to be a city issue as opposed to a county issue. So the um, transit agency is county level. Um, uh, and so uh, they contracted a company that is going to do to try to recoup revenue through advertising. Um, to install full shelter, this obviously is not full shelter, and um, the and the full shelter is at a cost of uh, the so the financial model here and um, is that uh, they believe so. First of all, I mean the, uh, they talk about ad revenues, but note that they have that. This is not that there's very high expense involved. The expectation is that this design build project for 3,000 bus stops has a total capital expense of about $218 million. Um, and this is something that has a lot of city disbursement uh, in addition. So this is not even... Uh, some kind of, uh, so, so it's something that I guess they're trying to get something from city revenues through a revenue share, but uh, just to make it clear, the reason they're doing it now is that they tried to do it, I think 10 or 12 years ago with JC Deco and the um, contract never happened because it turns out that uh, the advertising revenues didn't materialize or something like that. And so the, um, so, then, so, so you should really think of it as the city is spending hundreds of millions of dollars on bus shelter, which is by itself an okay thing. The problem is when just a pure capex is something like $70,000 per bus stop, which is rather ridiculous. Um, so again, this is about 70,000 uh, with like all included. There, there are things that you can break down into different elements of the shelter. Um, so uh, things like uh, th they have solar panels um, on the shelter. They have, uh, th th I guess they're connecting them with some bike docks, uh, a few of them. And then they're doing things. And, and then there's the advertising. The advertising actually creates a lot of cost. And, and this is a thing. So um, the um, overall... Um, shelter, so you can see the shelter unit cost per type, and you can literally see how much, how um, the shelter structure is 16k, and then a little bit extra for installation. But the ad box is 27, like literally. So just so what? The, so the base is about so so the base is 52, and again the ad is more than half of that. So. The, so the point is that LA has this installation of um, bus shelter, which is a good thing, but the cost is literally just doubled because of the ad system, uh, as opposed to the base structures, which are, I mean, there. Are, this is on the high side, but it's not insane. Um, so just to give some comparison, some comparative numbers, uh, does it really rain LA? Yes. So Los Angeles um, actually has pretty heavy rain. Uh, so um, let me show you guys something. Um, and by you guys, I, I mostly mean people who are used to European or maybe Eastern US, uh, or I should say not European, Northern European distribution of uh, precipitation. So in Los Angeles, rainfall is... Uh, so December, 
January, February, rainfall is pretty substantial in Los Angeles. There, there's pretty heavy rain. Now, obviously, there are micro there are microclimates. This is downtown. Um, I believe that it gets rainier toward the sea. Um, maybe there's some kind of orographic lift when, on the uh, as you go uphill. But usually, if you go uphill, that's like where nobody rides buses. Um, like. And uh, uh, like just south of Mulholland Drive or something, um, this is pretty substantial rain. Um, the reason people say LA doesn't get rain is that this only happens a couple months a year. Um, but when it rains, the the rain is pretty substantial. I think it is. I don't think there's any month in Berlin that hits that. Um, yeah. Um, so Berlin has the more typical precipitation distribution in which there's more in summer than in winter no month in berlin averages the wettest um three months of los angeles um now let me just see let me just look at prague i imagine prague is going to be like berlin uh, no prague is a little bit rainier in the uh in the summer but again no month in prague is as rainy as the uh, maximum month in uh, is the maximum month of Los Angeles, and it's not because of the snow. Because usually the the way you do snow is you con- uh, is you consider snow to be one tenth as much precipitation. So when you do precipitation, you usually do millimeters of rain plus centimeters of snow. So yeah, in LA it does rain. Uh, now in the summer, instead, it's important to have shade. Uh, yeah, LA, so why would, yeah, so the, essentially they're, instead of doing it as a, so the, so the issue is instead of just doing it, uh, you may have just confused inches and millimeters in the graph. Yes. Um, Los Angeles. So just to put this in perspective, um, Los Angeles is technically not semi. I mean, maybe downtown is. Um, so again, it's microclimates, but um, probably everything to the south and west of downtown LA is not semi-arid because semi-arid is um, the the limit is twenty in, in millimeters, twenty times the average temp- annual temperature. Um, it depends on seasonality of precipitation. What I'm saying is correct when precipitation is mostly in the winter. Uh, so LA is on the so downtown LA is on the border of semi-arid. Of course, if you go more inland, like into the Inland Empire, it's actually semi-arid. Um, if you go closer to the coast, it is. Uh, this is LAX, so that might be so that's much closer to the coast. For some reason, less precipitation, which surprises me. Um, lower temperature. Um, but, um, but it's something that's on the border of being semi-arid and just to put things in perspective, I think Delhi is also on the border of being semi-arid with like twice the precipitation because Delhi is warmer and also the precipitation is all in the summer. So there's just way more evaporation. Um, so anyway, um, the, uh, so again, it's just because annual precipitation is not much, but yeah, Mediterranean climate is like that. Um, and but again, in the summer you also need shade, um, and so they're doing so they're doing this contract, and half of the cost is the ad box, slightly more than half the cost. In fact, is the ad box, and there are a bunch of things that could kill, like smart, like whatever smart city elements are, uh, the um, then there are um, transit screens. That's actually a pretty good idea. That's uh, when the next bus is, um, and yeah, um. So, um, the problem is, again, it's just uh, way too much cost for the ad system. Um, Now, because of their high cost, they're not doing the entire city. They're only doing slightly less than half of the city. There are 8,000 bus stops, and this this contract is for 3K, 3,000 of the 8,000. So, uh, meanwhile, they're trying to, uh, they were trying to do something else, hence La Sombrita. La Sombrita is this. Uh, this is, so they partnered with an NGO uh, that um, said that they did some 
uh, international visits to come up with something that was based on uh, principles of gender equity, uh, gender equity uh, being important because um, women perceive wait times as longer than men in high crime neighborhoods. Uh, and uh, so uh, the bus shelter is, bus shelter generally makes the experience of waiting for a bus more pleasant. But because this is something that is more important to women than to men, it has disproportionate impact on women. This is the sum total of how much you should care about gender equity when doing bus shelter. Just know that you should do it. But they try to do something very special with it. And the, so the idea is that it provides shade during the daytime and uh, light during the nighttime. And you might be able to tell that this is not actually bus shelter. This is a flap. Uh, the flap does not actually provide shelter. Uh, the uh, sun angle, is, it's not necessarily aligned with the sun and the sun moves through. Um, sometimes you the the shade doesn't even reflect isn't even in a place you can stand if want more than one person like it's, everyone was ridiculing it on Twitter, um, and justly so. And street blog LA is generally a place that is a little bit too NGO e for its own good. So they're trying to say that it so they're defending this um, as well. There was no alternative because they can't install full shelter. Well, why can't they install full shelters? The answer is because they're wasting the money on the ad box. Um, and so the uh, so again, this was being widely ridiculed in Twitter to the point that suddenly there were all the cope answers. So things about how they consulted the community and it was important. Um, no, it actually isn't. Uh, the, so actually, Univ so actually, Univision. Um, was interviewing a, a bunch of people on this, and uh, they all ridiculed it as completely useless. Um, there's simply let me see if I can find La Sombrita at night. La Sombrita at night, because yeah, there are there are pics. Um, the light because again, it's supposed to provide light in the dark. Um, to make women f feel safe. I mean, to make people, but again, disproportionate impact on women and women. To to make people feel safer. Um, and um, I've seen. I'm pretty sure as this is not going to be a weird tweet. I don't think. I'm pretty sure I've seen this tweet before. They're just for some reason not loading the image in Reddit. Um, which entirely could be Twitter being. Jank. Um, yeah, this is the light it provides at night. So yeah, technically there is a little bit of illumination there, but most of the illumination is on the screen. It doesn't actually illuminate the person. Uh, it doesn't provide general illumination. Um, you might be able to tell that there's more light coming from other sources than from this. So yeah. Uh, yeah, this is, as you might be able to tell, not very useful at night. During the daytime, it depends on the sun's angle. So essentially, this is something that is completely useless. They uh, um, said that it was 10K per uh, thing to install it, but, the, but with mass production, it's going to go lower. But I mean, this thing is worth literally zero. Um, thanks, Nathan. Um, yeah, so why is the city paying for it? The, I mean, the city expects to recoup the, to, to recoup the costs through ads. The problem is, whenever you have something that involves um, promise of future long-term revenue, it's just never going to happen. Um, and this is a general issue with public transport, which it will get. It's, it's, it's an element of Cantuism, of... Uh, uh, trying to say, well, the private sector can do it. No, they can't. Um, I'm literally staring at how they can't. So there's a lot of cope about why La Sombrita is actually necessary. So one of so the stuff about community consultation, stuff about how the NGO didn't mean it. They were just trying to show how ridiculous it was. I don't think it was in this post on Streets Blog, but um, the 
Uh, so they say things like, it's not meant to be an alternative, but designed to work where bus shelter isn't feasible, like on narrow sidewalks. Now you might be able to tell, and this is in these pics, in one of them, yeah, this one, there's a bench on the sidewalk. If there's room for a bench, there's room to cover it up. Um, you don't actually need a lot of clearance, by which I mean any clearance, between the back of the bench and the um, back of the shelter, because the back of the shelter can even double as the back of the bench if you're in a constrained space. Um, so I'm literally staring at evidence that it is feasible to install full shelter. Um, um, and I'm even seeing the box that is considered acceptable to break the sidewalk. You see the tree here? Um, so this is a little dirt around the tree. There might be a grate there, I can't tell at this resolution, but it looks, this looks like it's not grated. So that, like there is a little bit of a step down and step up, which means that a person in a wheelchair does not have the full width of the street, only half the width, which means that they can take this entire space and put shelter in it. So clearly it is feasible. Um, now, can they afford it? Yes, they can, because if they didn't do the ad boxes, that would already pay for it. Now, um, I don't have links for how much this costs in other um, expensive American cities. I have sources that are not links. So the first source is I can tell you verbally what it costs for Ripta. Why Ripta? Because I'm, I know people who work there and they've been pushing bus shelter installation. Um, Ripta has answered their internal advocacy and is installing bus shelter, not as much as I would like. Uh, I believe last I, heard, last I was told is that the policy is that bus shelter goes, at every, goes up at every bus stop with at least 50 daily uh, riders boarding from it. This is way too much. They should cut this down to something like two. Um, this this is how good bus shelter is. Like it's something that you can justify at basically every bus stop that you can justify the existence of. Um, and, um, but again, they're doing it. And the cost I was told a couple years ago was 15K and um, when I just asked in the wake of La Sombrita, I was told 20K, I guess, inflation, general cost increases. So 50 should be compared with 20 or 52 or 70 should be compared with 20. Um, Ripta is not the best at this. This is still a high cost American city. Now, of course, Providence does not have the cachet of LA, um, but they're actually pretty comparable in costs. So rents in Providence are obviously much lower um, but all other costs are high. Providence is embedded in the Northeast. Yes, it's a more peripheral. It's not New York. It's not Boston. Um, but it's still Northeastern cost structure. The, um, uh, supermarket that I used when I lived in Providence, it, it was called, it is still there. It's called Eastside Market. It's a very nice supermarket. Uh, and it's also a pretty high cost urban supermarket. Maybe not New York high cost, but pretty high cost supermarket. It's not at all the costs that people in random non-urban parts of America, non-Northeastern or California and urban parts of America are used to from um, Walmart and Costco and Target. Certainly nothing that I'm used to in Berlin um, where Aldi essentially gets you Walmart prices, sub Walmart prices in an urban format and with German levels of work in our parliament. Um, so LA should, like Providence is a pretty good comparison for LA. Um, now in comments, when I was complaining about this um, a little under two weeks ago, it was also pointed out by Jonah Bliss that um, in Glendale, uh, shelter looks to be five to eight K. Um, now, I can't click this link. Rather, I can click this link and it will tell me that I am not allowed to access this. I think it's a GDPR issue. Uh, yeah, and so, yeah, um, Prague is, yeah, so Prague is European costs, um, although given how much it costs you guys to build Metroline D, uh, 
very high end European cost. Yeah, so you can do things like this, and this is fine. Um, if you're worried about very heavy rain, you might need to glass panel one or two of the sides, but that's also fine. Um, this is very simple. Uh, now, in case now, if you don't pan now, if you don't impanel the sides, you can evidently do this on a uh, rather ridiculously narrow sidewalk. Uh, Wait, how does how is a person in a wheelchair supposed to use the sidewalk? Because uh, this is to why I stop. Or is the or is the idea here that um, wheelchairs are supposed to fuck off and die? Because this is there's a lot of places. Oh, maybe the maybe the wheelchair. Maybe this is a low enough step. Yeah, no, this is very much a fuck off and die type. Um, accessibility environment, and yet. The bus shelter is not what it's not is not what's causing the fuck off and die accessibility environment because the because a wheelchair can roll through this. So yeah, there there are clearly options and yeah, it's a couple it's a couple k if you're bad at this because it's it's America, it may be very low five figures. But remember that on the budget that LA is has for half the city, um, Providence would be able to have done the entire city. Um, again, twenty k including installation times eight thousand is one hundred sixty. Um, and even if there are some fixed costs that the calculations farther down don't include, you can still cut half of it because, again, ad box is half, a little more than half of the entire thing. Um, and yeah, no, it's just uh, the, and I have no idea why shelter structure suddenly for, for the other alternatives is more expensive. Um, there are people who will sell you shelter for a lot less than that. Um, the, um, in fact, and in fact, these people include the contractor. Like the contractor has open costs for, for things that they sell to a bunch of cities and they, it's not 50. I mean, even with installation, it's not 50. It's just somehow everything got tacked on. So this is the failure. And the problem is that people are turning it into something bigger than it is. Um, what it is, Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, no, in, in the United States, we don't, no, we, in the United States, the, the, the wheelchair accessibility is just better. Um, like American accessibility laws, because so much stuff is grandfathered, they sometimes even have an anti-accessibility impact in that it's hard to do partial things because uh, they void the, because they void the grandfather clause. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's about, so... It's usually it's usually around ten k, maybe a bit more, um, if it's higher quality. But I'm saying when I'm saying a bit, I mean thirteen. And what we both saw from BC Transit, which I linked to in the post, in this post is I think fifteen k Canadian or something, um, so twelve American or something like that. And yeah, so oh, that's not a oh oh, of course, yes yes yes. And okay, it's not a Prague shelter. It's a. I am sorry about you being in rural Czechia. Um, this is what I call, and note that I'm calling this rural. Uh, or is it Brno or something? Because um, of my opinions about what cities count as cities. This goes to Bohumín. Okay. And, and Novi Bohumín. Okay. Um... Uh, yeah, the, yeah, on the residential streets. Um, a lot of these streets are non-residential. Um, so, so anyway, the point is that there, this is a problem, high insulation cost, which has a solution. The solution being slice the ads, uh, not slice ads, cut the ads. Synonyms. They don't always mean the exact same thing. So kill the ads, kill the ad box, spend city money on it. Um, this is a service to city residents. It's okay for the city to spend money on services to city residents. Uh, and yeah, so instead, there's a lot of can't do ism. So, what do you mean by can't do ism? It's first of all, people saying that it's impossible when there's literally a bench right here and um, a break in the sidewalk right there, so that it's um, so showing that it's completely kosher to uh, enclose this. Um, then there's the quote, I don't remember. Um, so there's more co there 
I don't. So there's more um, quotes here. Uh, the um, so so there are more quotes here about how uh, the um, how, how uh, the consultant that did this uh, the consultant that did this were just trying to show how impossible it is to work under current regulations and this is where they're echoing things like it costs over 50k to install and must conform to very strict design standards uh again in glendale if you do not know if you don't know la well enough glendale is literally adjacent to la so same state same county um and this is not some kind of upstart this is la department of transportation so if there's an LA bylaw, LA can change the bylaw on this. Uh, in Glendale, they can do it, apparently. Um, Providence can do it. It's maybe not the same California regulations, but probably very similar, actually. Just from my experience with New England and, and the comparison with California, usually they're the same, give or take. Um, all you need to do is build things yourself. Um, that's all you need to do. Um, instead, there's the cope of, oh, it just highlights how difficult it is, which just as a reminder, when they started this, they didn't say this shows how ri the ridiculousness of um, the flap shows how uh, difficult the regulations are. No, it doesn't. When they, st when they installed it, they, hey, um, the, the consultant said that they visited a lot of other places globally to look at best practices. And somehow they came up with this. No, they intended it seriously. They intended it seriously, and this is what they got. Um, and again, there's the entire thing about how it's about there are too many layers of review. Sure, there are too many layers of review, but Glendale has it, Glendale is governed fundamentally the same as Los Angeles. Um, Rhode Island is a state and not a city, and this does matter, but Rhode Island does not have normal state politics by which i mean um there there's a problem in safe american states this is a real political problem where um they don't have party governments um to some extent it exists in red states not in blue states and in red states it's the most obnoxious stuff like um various laws that basically mandate the death penalty for being trans or something it's not Try, I mean, you, you read what the like, more serious center-right think tanks in America say about like making America more competitive or something, and you, you look at what Florida and Texas and Ohio are doing, and these are generally disjoint. Um, and the same is true with blue, and with blue states, again, you, um, there's a, a pretty consistent liberal agenda or progressive agenda, um, and... Much of it is stuff that New York and California could do if they wanted. They have democratic supermajorities. Um, the Republicans are not competitive. Um, last time California had a Republican governor, it was Arnold Schwarzenegger, who even then, 20 years ago, was said to be far too moderate for the party. And the only reason he could win was that the recall structure was that he didn't need to go through a primary. Um, for people who don't know, by the way, um, or maybe who know, it's not for people who don't know, so we'll know a little bit. Um, the Northeastern United States has a tradition of moderate Republicans. Um, for example, Charlie Baker or Larry Hogan. These are usually not really into culture war uh, messaging, except to some extent law and order aspects of racism, like um, Rudy Giuliani. But then on everything else, they don't do that. So, for example, Rudy Giuliani in the 2000s was considered very moderate because he very clearly was very comfortable around um, queer people. And uh, he uh, was uh, pro-immigration. Uh, and he was pro-choice to the point of essentially having to promise that whatever his own opinions on, abortions, on, on abortion were, he was going to nominate um, Supreme Court justices who were anti-abortion. So that's the kind of Republican who wins in New York. Um, or who won in New York 30 years ago after there was a race riot. Um, and uh, and again, and, and Baker doesn't even do right hustling. Baker is just do nothing. Um, or, or someone like Chris Christie. Again, people who are 
fiscally conservative in a lot of ways, um, but and, and often run against the civil service. But I mean, in the Northeast, everyone runs against the civil service. Um, so anyway, that it's, it's that kind of tradition. Um, essentially, the kind of the, the the way the American Republican Party became populist um, was often in opposition to the northeastern uh, Republican establishment, like um, Rockefeller. Like like they were called Rockefeller Republicans, the non populist ones, and they're the ones that would keep winning elections. The point is in California. Uh, yes, please. Um, you can email it to me, but I'm not gonna w look at it on feed because I do not check email on feed. Um, but yeah, please email it to me. I'm curious. Um, but thank you. Um, and so the point is in California, even though California at this point is as left wing as the Northeast, maybe even more, uh, the Republicans in California are still reeling from the Reagan era when they could be as populist as they like. And the result is that the, um, is that in the last 20 years, California has been essentially a Republican free. And yeah, there was Schwarzenegger, but Schwarzenegger was more moderate than even the Northeastern Republicans. The point is that these are one party states. There's no such thing as a Republican party. Um, in the recall against Gavin Newsom, uh, when he was caught indoor dining in a fancy restaurant with donors after he signed an indoor dining ban, uh, the Corona lockdown measure, um, the entire Democratic Party supported the governor, the entire Republican Party went with a guy in the recall who was a total conspiracy theorist, even when they, they had a mayor, uh, the mayor of San Diego, um, Kevin Falconer, who was very moderate, um, could peel moderate Democrats because he identified as EMB and had some EMB credentials to him. Uh, let me check how well he did. I, I, I think he got like a single digit percentage. Like uh, the, the Republicans... The, the main the state what, California gubernatorial campaign. Yeah, so the no won by, by a giant majority. And let's look at the numbers, 4.9, 7.9. Um, the Democrats didn't run an alternative. So, look, so note that there are a lot of vote cancellation. Yeah, Falconer got 8%. Like Falconer, I mean, this was the, so. The point is that the Democrats in California have nothing to worry about from the Republicans, and so there's a Democratic deficit because people don't have a choice between two things. Because the Republican Party is okay with being a perennial loser, um, and so the actions entirely in primaries, which have a Democratic deficit. This is how cities work, and the point is that Rhode Island, and the point I was trying to make about California and Rhode Island. Is, Rhode Island is a state and not a city, so more democratic legitimacy, but it's also tiny and um, so based on local ties. And again, it's a state that doesn't really have a Republican Party um, nowadays. And so it's the same thing. There's such a democratic deficit that it's not like there's any kind of serious good government there. And actually, actually, uh, serious good government, uh, I was missing words, serious good government impetus there. Um, even Massachusetts is better. Um, and so the, uh, no, no, I was, I was hearing complaints when I lived there about how, um, yeah, if you might, if you ride a bus between two cities, I think it was a trip between Providence and Newport, the bus driver might stop in the middle of the route for a cup of coffee and you couldn't or say anything about it because probably the person you would complain to is the bus driver's cousin. Um, it's like that level of bad government. And so if Providence can do it for 20K, LA can do it for 20K. Um, uh, I don't actually remember what address is on my about page, but I mean, if it's a real address, I will. Yeah. Um, and so the, and, and so the point is, uh, the point is that, uh, oh, hey, Caledosian. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's probably the best email. It's just, as I said, I, I don't like checking. Hi. Hi um. I imagine Tokyo has good bus shelter and not this. Yeah, and so the point is that they can do it. They just are running the project very poorly. Um, and then everyone is convinced that it's some kind of big can't-do government. Yeah, the government can't do, but it's actually very easy to fix that. The problem is um, they've convinced themselves that they can't. It's kind of like 
it, it's a can't do it. It's it's more a won't do it in um in a way than a can't do it. It's I keep, I keep saying that America can't build, but in many cases, and I suspect this is one of them. America does not want to build. And now bear in mind, this is. Now I should qualify this. Okay, when I say America does not want to build, they often do it in the context of just not pursuing useful projects. So in New York, um, they constantly look for excuses not to do things. But here, again, they're doing 3,000 out of 8,000 bus stops. Um, and again, I'm not saying they're doing this at three, they're planning to do this at 3,000. The plan for this was, 5, 000, was the other 5,000 until. Um, the fact they were being widely ridiculed on social media led them to retool. Um, no, three thousand. Remember, three thousand out of eight thousand. I don't want to say it's going to be the best in America, but it might actually it might actually beat New York. Like New York is full of non-shelter. I mean, non-shelter. This is a poll with um, a bus timetable as opposed to um, the. Or at this point, they don't even have a static bus timetable as a problem. They have QR codes, which is really nice when I visit and don't have data because my American phone is ancient and uh, apparently can't data anymore. Um, and so the, um, the. So in New York, they, I, I don't think it's half as much. So in LA, that's actually doing things, but very haltingly and very partially. Um, and why? Um, and again, this is a choice. It's a choice not to do. I don't think the stream... It doesn't look to me like the stream is frozen. Um, and so... Uh, and so the point is, in LA, yeah, they're doing it as kind of a revenue sharing, as they're trying to do it with ads, which is what they tried to do 10 years before, I believe, with JC Deco, and then that fell through. And the issue here is there's this mentality that everything has to involve a private partner. The city can't just install things itself. The city can't just buy things itself. Um, now, let me budget this for a moment at 20K which is still more expensive than it should be, but again, Providence can do it. Um, Glendale, can, Glendale can do much better. And um, not 3,000, but all 8,000 bus stops. Let's not even do stop consolidation. So in general, you should also cut the cost in half by deleting every other bus stop because American bus stop spacing is ridiculously narrow. Um, so this actually should be 4,000 by about 20K, so 80K. Um, but let's even do 8,000 by 20K, so 160K. This is, to be clear, not city revenues. This is a one-time expense. There's also a maintenance cost. But the ma first of all, the maintenance capex, as you can see here, is very low. And second, maintenance includes the ad screen, which we're cutting out. Um, so, um, the, uh, so, so the point here is the um, 160... Is something that the city can do. Um, so I mean, this is this would be this is supposed to be paired with revenues, but remember they're not going to get the revenues because as soon as they've because this is not out of any real fiscal conservatism. Okay, this is 160k we're talking about. LA is a city of what 3.9 million people, 3.8 million people, 3.8. Um, after some corona depopulation, yeah, 3.8. Um, that's not actually a lot of money. Um, usually, for a uh, for at, at the American local level, uh, the um, most money, the, the biggest spending item is the schools. So this is why I'm checking this. So. Let's look at the cost of that, and then I think it's, I think maybe number two is LAPD, actually. So let's look at the, but so we can do LAPD budget as well. Um, and I think in Los Angeles Unified might be the county, although if it's 500K, then students might be much smaller than county. Um, the annual budget of the cops is, what was in 2020, 1.2. Um, LAPD, by the way, is notoriously small. Uh, 
to the point that it's not actually the second largest urban police department in the United States. It's the third largest because Chicago PD is, I believe, larger. Um, LA has 3.8 million people. Chicago has like two thirds that size. Um, and of course, um, so this is 12K, and it's not even 12K sworn. It's, or maybe it is 12K. Yeah, no, 10K. This is 10K sworn. Um, on a population of just under four million, again three point eight, I guess, with current depopulation. Um, so uh, Chicago is better funded, has more cops, um, way fewer people, like a little less than, like maybe seventy percent as many, and more cops. Um, and so. LAPD, which to be clear is by Amer is by big city U.S. standards not very well funded, uh, is 1.2 per year, 1.2 dollars, 2023 dollars are a lot more. There, this would be like 1.4, 1.5 in today's money. Um, it's how the inflation rate has been the last three years. Um, and this is a plan that's supposed to take 10 years. Um, so a 10-year plan. Fuck 10 years, this is cheap enough, they can do it in five years. Yeah, we're talking, if they don't do stock consolidation, 30 mil a year, um, which by the standards of things that LA is spending money on is nothing. So again, LAPD, um, um, the school district, uh, so this is a random, this is a this is um a fund this is not the, the usual this is a budget reserve not per year um let's oh uh the budget the actual budget is 8 billion a year uh for the schools again this is usually the biggest uh local spending item uh Let's do National Transit Database, just because that's the only thing that will tell me reliably uh, LA Transit funding, which is, I mean, I mean, we should not, I mean, at some point, I mean, I mean, bus shelter is less important. I mean, it's less important to have bus shelters than to have schools. So, I mean, yeah, they should spend orders of magnitude more on the schools than on bus shelter. But I mean, I'm also talking about annual spending that's two and a half orders of magnitude less than the city budget for the schools. Um, and this is how much money? Okay, so operating expenses, bus. Now this is county and not city. Um, so there is a bit of leakage there and yet. Um, so the annual costs of the transit system in LA are two mil, or two bill, not two mil, that's lousy, two bill. Essentially, none of that is recovered through fair revenues. This is all in the 2019 dollars. So again, add 20-ish percent, 25 percent um, to or maybe add 20 percent for today. Um, capital, um, very, reg very regular capital funds. LA has very uh, regular capital funding through ballot measures with all the spending committed through, I think, 2060. And so what I'm saying is that there should be a one time about 160 public funding from LA. This is the city. Actually, again, 80 because they should kill half the bus stops. Um, now, LA is less than half of county population. Uh, I don't know what its share of the bus stops is because... Um, uh, I mean, I presume that because LA is denser than the rest of the county, then maybe it's fewer bus stops. It maybe has, uh, yeah, fewer bus stops per capita. Um, and then you add things like Glendale, Burbank, Pasadena, Tor um, uh, Torrance, Long Beach, things like that, Santa Monica. But um, uh, but evidently, Glendale is already doing it. Um, so like at county level again, I don't um and by side and by I don't know how many bus stops they might actually have. No, they're not telling me about how many bus stops are. Check. Huh. Okay. So they're saying twelve thousand bus stops. 
Okay. Um, yeah, so they're saying 12,000 bus stops on LA Metro. Um, now, again, they're, they're, now LA Metro is not the only player there. There are, I think, some small other ones. But yeah, okay, so what LA is doing is... Yes, this is also one of the issues. Uh, the um, because it's ad based, they don't instead of doing it their normal way, which is um, you do it, which is if you need to prioritize every other bus stop gets shelter, so that um, when the time comes to killing half the bus stops, uh, you just kill the ones that don't have shelter. That's very easy to actually prioritize that way. Um, instead, yeah, they uh do it in descending order of income, and this is one of the impetuses for... Is impetus the correct plural? Plural? Not plural. Not plural. Not plural. Plural? Uh, anyway, it's actually mentioned in this page. That, um, it's in lower income. It's in, it's in um, poor neighborhoods, and then it's just not providing any useful service is the problem. Um, but it's like the appearance of doing something, I guess. Um, and so the... Um, so this is something that the city can absolutely fund, or LACMTA can absolutely fund, because if it's 12,000 bus stops, then, again, without consolidation, 12,000 times 20K is 250. Um, now, this is um, a pretty substantial share of annual operating expenses, but it would not be done in a year. It would be done, even if you don't... In, five years it's 50 mil which is already an order of magnitude and a half less than the operating expenses but wait um bus shelter is known to reduce perceived wait times and this means that this is going to induce more bus ridership um now in la specifically f um bus fare revenue is so small that i don't think that pays for itself um, in a place where fair revenue is higher, I think in New York it might actually pay for itself. Um, but in LA, like even just the extra ridership would pay for substantial, would pay a substantial portion of this. And honestly, they do a lot of capital funding that will not pay for itself for public transit because governments provide public services. Um, you don't actually try to come up with how you're going to uh, recoup the revenue that you're spending on municipal schools, um, on a state healthcare system. Uh, no, just normal government services. Um, and yeah, I mean, if it's something that you think can make, can make a profit like the trains, yeah, I mean, could, like run it efficiently, but um, at some point, it's just a service. Um, so it's kind of this weird pretend fiscal conservatives. And what I'm saying pretend is that um, these kinds of privatization arrangements where um, the uh, where in theory it's not supposed to involve public funding because in theory uh, the city is going to get all the is supposed to get all the revenue um, is that it runs into the usual early commitment problem. So essentially when the city of LA budgets things like this way um, so when, when it budgets them in a way where the uh, uh, expenses uh, are to be recouped through fair revenue. The uh, uh, bus shelters are uh, always paired with ads. In fact, the ads are the majority of the cost of the entire thing. So this is essentially the city working with an advertising agency on delivering eyeballs to the advertising agency. And yeah, maybe there's going to be some extra bus shelter as a uh, as a benefit, but that's not the majority of where the money goes. Um, priorities are not determined. If, if you want to look at where people's priorities are, don't look at what they say. Don't don't look at what, how much they use the word equity in their report. Look at the budget. This is not the budget of a place that cares about equity. A corollary of this is that any anything that they say that they do for equity as a side, in this case, La Sombrita, should be viewed as bullshit. So in this, so with this budget, which is what people who are not um, used to believing people who um, do DEI 
say. Uh, um, when, and so, so what normal people look at this and understand the city can, um, does not believe it can do it itself. Can it? Yes, it can. I'm looking at the budget right now. But um, the uh, and, and I'm looking at com- and I'm looking at Comparanda. Um, but they're broadcasting that they don't think that they can do it. What this means is that the private concessionaire can walk away, and then the city will have to pay this bit, but will not get this bit. This is not something that is unique to LA. This is not something that's unique to bus shelter. There are many such examples. Um, Again, something like this happened with J.C. Deco in L.A. about this very topic. In New York City, okay? Um, so before Eric and I were being ignored by um, the uh, MTA and other organs about our construction cost report, we had something called, we were being ignored about something called rebuilding bus ridership in America. Yeah, we wrote this. Uh, it's, it's a Brooklyn bus redesign. Um, proposal with one of the things we said and at the time I did not have the figures um, um, which meant that I could not uh, push back against the person in the meeting who said that it's who insisted that it's impossible to install bus shelter uh, because it's too expensive what you said is, is again kill half the bus stops put shelter in the other half um, the um, and, and again it was oh it needs to be part of an advertising agreement this is what the city of New York uh, believed as well. Um, it's what we were told at the meeting. Um, and again, at the time, I didn't know enough to push. Uh, knowing what I know now, I would have like literally, I would have used the word "well, actually," and then given the a, 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 a spiel about how much it costs in comparable places, of which Providence does count. Remember, Providence is an expensive northeastern city. There's a reason nobody moves to Providence to um, escape the cost of living of New York or Boston unless they need to be in New York and Boston very regularly by train. Um, people who are genuinely escaping the cost of living in New York or Boston or D.C. move to the South. Um, so, um, the, so, so the upshot is that a city that broadcasts that it can't do it without some kind of private partner is telling the private partner, you have absolute power, please exploit us. Um, because you see, there's a lot of lock-in, a lot of early commitment to the bus stop, uh, to the not the bus stop, to the bus shelter program. LA was very, um, trumpeting it very loudly in uh, 2021, I believe. I remember that I read this. Um, I don't remember when, maybe a year and a half ago or, or so, and I was very excited. And, I, and and even then, I saw that the costs were very high, and and I, and I was concerned, but I liked that they were doing it. And for the record. I still like that they're doing it. It's the ridiculous thing. It's the, I mean, is the cost about, I don't know, three times, four times, five times by? Yeah, it is. Um, it might actually beat a benefit cost analysis, even at 5x, is how ridiculously, um, it is how ridiculously underrated bus shelter. It, it's how ridiculously bus shelter is underrated in America. And so the, um, the, yeah, this is, where did I, there, when I was reading that, when, when I was reading, when I was writing this, I saw this 2021 article, um, I think it's when I, I guess it was this maybe, it, it's a bunch of, uh, links that I was sending in after, in other places and comments here, but, but the point is that, um, they announced it very loudly in 21. And so it's, so essentially, and, and they're seriously trying, and, and they're trying to get the, the uh, okay, this is not, uh, I, I guess it's a little older, but um, but it's not older, newer, it's March 2023. And again, I remember reading this 2022, maybe late 21, but the point is that they're, uh, so, Yeah, exactly. And so, so there's a lot of lock-in. When you, when you announce that something is a priority, what you're saying is, please exploit us because, um, the, politician, because the politicians in the city will get egg on their faces if the project fails. Um, and um, conversely, there's no... Now, there is... Now, when you, when you do this kind of big announcement, 
there is a counter to the fact that it's early commitment, which is that at least it means that there is political will to get it done. Well, La Sombrita broadcasts the worst of both worlds. No political will to get actual shelter done, but yes, please exploit us. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, um, this is something that, um, yeah, I, I mean, you can always do this kind of privatization, but when you, if you privatize, you need to be able to do things yourself. This is why a lot of things look like they might be okay in early privatization. Let's say you're a Nordic country, you've just begun privatizing planning, but you still maintain in-house capacity to oversee. Um, you're still going to be hit with a bad soft cost problem, um, but you're still going to have way better costs than anything in the Anglosphere because you're not as exploitable as American agencies or British ones. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they can do that too. Uh, isn't there a point that the delay doesn't want? It does want posters, but that's the point. Um, it was announced as a big program. Uh, before, well before La Sombrita. Um, in 2021, it was announced as this big program that they're doing because there's a lot of advocacy for it. Remember, LA has a lot of bus advocacy on, for example, the bus riders there. And the, no, the BRU are accelerationists. Like, li like literally, they're people who believe that America is irredeemable and it's, specific, and it's specifically irredeemably racist. So the way to showcase how the first world and the third world have opposed interests is to um, draw racial divisions between whites and people of color in the United States. Um, problem, for example, the main locus of fandom for third worldists was always Maoist China, and uh, Chinese Californians are famously not at all into that kind of politics. Oh, LA City wants bus shelter, LA County doesn't. Okay, but LA City can just build bus shelter. Um, and remember, LA will benefit. Even So even if the revenue leaks to LA CMTA, LA City is going to benefit from its residents having better public transit. They can do it. Um, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, sure, you're right. Um, let me do this for a moment. Yeah, so um, this is what I said when I was saying LA County um, might not want this, but LA City is what uh, matters uh, for this. this. is an LA City project. The sidewalks are maintained by LA City. Um, and, uh, and so what they're saying with this combo of the, of the way the contract is written and the, um, and, and the fact that the majority of the cost is ads is, yeah, we want this, but we don't know enough to supervise this. So please exploit us. Please threaten to walk away. Like the uh, like for the purple line in Maryland. I was talking before about um, moderate Northeastern Republicans. Um, Larry Hogan canceled the red line in Baltimore um, because he was aware, uh, he said he worried about cost explosion. This was the project done more in-house. Um, the other project he kept with roughly comparable then projected per rider cost was the purple line in the DC suburbs. The purple line mostly serves white people, not just, but mostly. Red line mostly would have served black people. Uh, it's mostly for West Baltimore. Um, and, and I think this was related. I mean, not necessarily in the, uh, not, not in the most assholishly racist way, but in the, well, we don't want our resources going to uh, uh, less productive element. You know, like that kind of racism as opposed to like maybe the more direct populist racism that people have been more used to. But I mean, racism is racism. But, but the point is that the purple line was the one that was structured as a PPP with full privatization of risk. So um, there was supposed to be less risk of a cost escalation. Guess what happened? Uh, if, you're, if, if you know what happened, you don't need to guess. If you don't, and your guess was the concessionaire threatened to walk away unless the state paid them extra due to cost overruns and the state folded, uh, that guess would be correct. Um, so essentially what this is saying is the city is privatizing risk. This will work exactly as well as all past privatization of risk. And this is why they absolutely can do it themselves. Again, think of it not as a vehicle to advertise to city residents, but as a vehicle to improve city residents' 
access to services. One of these services is public transportation. LA being LA, this is an almost soup kitchen level of service. That is to say, users tilt poor. Um, I believe, and by I believe, I mean I'm going to see if I can make the Census Bureau uh, give me the data because some like it's. So we're going to look at this table, means of transportation to work by selected characteristics, which instead of telling you things like what proportion of uh, people in the geography take many modes of, trans uh, of transport to work, they only look at the three biggest, which are um, drive alone, carpool, and, uh, uh, and public transit. And then they will tell you, the, and then they will break these down by demographic cross tabs. So things like average income by you know, um, proportions male, female, proportions by race, proportions native and foreign born, um, commute times, things like that. And for some reason, it's not working, uh, which is really weird. So we're going to let this stew for a little bit um, and get back to it and see in two minutes if it's still not working. Right, it's not, yeah, it, so bear in mind they're not doing interjurisdictional quibbling, like specifically, and like there, I've, I've read a lot of cope on this and some of this I'm not thinking to because I can't find it anymore. Uh, but there, but one of, the, for example, one of the cope that I've read was that um, the, was that, um, was that um, KDI um, had done something like this before that they uh, proposed something horrifically expensive as a way to comply with street vendor rules which was uh like several hundred pounds um not and not pounds as in quid pounds as in um 0 0.4536 kilograms um the, the figure 700 is stuck in my is stuck in my head but again i can't find the link anymore and um and then they said well and then when so, and because i said this was the technically the only thing that complied with all the regulations and some immigrant Propose, uh, asked for something much simpler and got the uh, permit slash variance. And they said, well, we're just trying to show, and then and KDA said, well, we're just trying to show how impossible it is. Well, no, it isn't. You were trying to, uh, you were trying to, uh, um, you're trying to comply with the regulations and um, you apparently are not very good at your job. And it's the same thing with us and Brita. So a lot of, so the COPE is not, it's interjurisdictional. Yes, people talk about different, departments that need to sign off on this but these are but these are within the city at no point have i ever at no point during this have i seen people say well there's city county fraction maybe there is it has not been mentioned at least um and this is by people who tend to be very aggressively in your face about how much they know more than you about bullshit government minutiae like um how no, why the hell do you call? Why do you hell do you call this an Amtrak plan? This was a state rail plan. Why do you say state? It was an Amtrak. Or why do you say county? This was city. So, people who would know city versus county don't seem to think that it's a city versus county quibbling. Um. Oh God. Oh God. Yeah, yeah, the part where um, they were trying, the, yeah, the part where KDI were um, going, I don't know where they went. Yeah, I imagine a bunch of Latin American examples in LA is considered, um, including by some of the, I don't actually know if um, Sarah Suleiman herself said that, but, um, uh, but, but other DI trolls in LA have complained that, uh, like, Ado like Adonia Lula was the one who complained that, uh, um, it's racist to try to learn best by practices from European city because Europe equals white um, and people should instead look at Latin American examples and the fact that all Latin American examples are in places that are very car dominated is unimportant to her um, nor is the fact that Quito for example is building a, so, um, is building a subway at something like one quarter the cost per kilometer as Los Angeles adjusted for PPPs any uh, taken as an indication that maybe they should imitate that part of Latin America um, that part is in 
the, fa the fact that the government, the, the fact that civil service is run by engineers. Yeah, me so the metro in, so Quito has a metro. Um, they used Madrid Metro as a consultant, but presumably retained a lot of in-house expertise. Uh, 23 kilometers for, don't look at this cost, this is bullshit. Look at, this is in the dollars of two years ago, 4.3 bill. Uh, what can LA do for 4.3 bill? Crenshaw is not, is partially undervalued. I think all of these, call, um, yeah, so it costs a little more to build 23 kilometers of subway in Quito as it is, why is this? Uh, as it is, look at here, look at here, not at what's being covered by the weird chart. Um, four kilometers in a way, yeah. We're talking factor of five cost difference uh, per kilometer between the two cities. So, yeah, so a lot of it is, um, well, in Quito, they make do, you know, shit in Quito, there's a lot of people who are too, they're probably the average person in Quito is too poor to afford a car. Um, and so the, um, so yeah, a lot of it is, is just NGO incompetence. But it feeds into a specific kind of city incompetence in which it's not that there are eight different departments that need to sign off on that because that is priced in. And remember what happens when you remove the ad, when you remove, when you remove the ad boxes, the cost actually starts getting reasonable. And Glendale is, again, it's not, it's not meaningfully different from LA on this. So if Glendale can do it, LA can do it. It's just that in LA... I guess they thought of it as a big project, and as soon as it became a big project, it suffered from the usual um, surplus driving, where, of course, it can be connected to something, and of course, you're going to um, do a bunch of extras, and of course, it's such a big city initiative, everything's going to be connected. This is what happened. There's a lot of this kind of camp doism, where, and, 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 and so this brings me to a part about the camp doism. The camp doism is not that LA can't build, because I can literally show you on this very budget how it can. This should not be that. Um, that simple. Um, it really is that simple. And um, instead, um, the what, what this is really about is about a political ecosystem that can't, and this includes all the people who are saying that it's about uh, working faster or about how they can't do it without uh, widening the sidewalks. Yes, they can literally look at in the background or people are saying that they can't do it without eight different departments signing off. Well, eight different departments sign off on this and they can literally cut out this from the budget and it's going to look okay. Um, and yeah, the city would need to spend its own money, but the city, but, but remember, this is a drop in the bucket compared with the city budget. Um, the city is paying, I mean, people in the city are paying all these sales taxes to LACMTA, um, and the sales taxes are going, are getting wasted on, um, light rail extensions into outer suburbia. The, the way LA works is that, um, the priorities there are very warped. I, I keep talking about the difference between building well and building the right priorities. New York at this point is building the right priorities, but it's building them very poorly. LA is building very poorly, but also is building kind of the wrong lines in many ways. Um, so too much emphasis in suburban expansion and not enough on the core. So essentially LA is already eating money to light rail expansion to the edge of the county. Um, LA can spend a little bit of money, of, of its own money, on better bus service for its own residents. And and, and it's kind of a weird thing where they don't exactly choose not to build. They choose to build, but they choose to build in a way that's so horrifically risk privatized that for all intents and purposes, they've chosen a way that they cannot build. And yeah, there's a lot of window dressing, a lot of equity washing um, leading to this being considered... Um, a move forward for gender equity or for racial equity. Um, I'm sure that if you install a, uh, that, that if in a place where there's this really nice water fountain, 
in 1950s Alabama and it says white and you install some little bullshit fountain next to it with a sign colored uh, maybe that is racial equity no it actually isn't racial equity would be uh, removing the white sign from the water fountain and it's, it's kind of that kind of bullshit of a lot of equity washing um, a lot of I'm not even going to say a lot of red tape because, again, the problem is not the red tape. The problem is the refusal to do it except as a vehicle for ads. And when the city says we are a small uh, government agency, ooh, um, we, we can't, uh, we're little children, please help us, what they're actually saying is please beat us. We do not have the wherewithal to run away. And, yeah, it is going to work exactly as well or as poorly as they would think that I mean, no shit um it, it's it, it's it's a city that cho- that it's kind of weird because it wants to build but it chooses to be unable to build if that makes sense um and then a political advocacy space that chooses to talk about how it's just impossible to build as opposed to point out how they can do it it's not actually that hard, not here. Um, it took me, and I shouldn't say me because I was not the only person writing that report, but it took us years to get to the level of being able to say how Second Avenue subway phase one couldn't be, could have been done cheaper. Um, like concretely, I mean things like the, um, sta- I mean things like the station size, um, or, Specifics about the um, about OPM grabbing. Specifics about uh, specifics about um, uh, supernumerary workers. Here it's not years. Here, um, it's a couple hours of looking at this. Not even hours, less than that of looking at the at these while ar- while arguing with other people in the comments section. Um, it's not hard. They've just chosen. To make this hard um and that's what it is um and in the future instead of talking about how it's just impossible to build just build you can do it it's not actually that hard um anyway i will take questions now um and uh we'll go until people wanting to stop it's not been a very long uh, oh, this has worked. Well, I, I, while I wait for people to talk, we'll see if I can make this work in the geography of Los Angeles because it's sometimes... Maybe Los Angeles City is not the best geography and I should do Los Angeles County, but whatever. Um, so let's see. Uh, so in LA, the point is that uh, on 1.8 million people drive, uh, 1.8 in total, 1 million drive, and only 100,000 take public transit. And uh, should look at average incomes or something. Median earnings, twenty uh, not thirty nine point five drive alone, twenty three point three public transit. Yeah, that's all. Um, I imagine county would be similar. Uh, and. Uh, just to put it in perspective, US wide, um, median earnings drive alone is 42 and public transit is 35. So, not a very large difference. And this is, I guess, maybe this is 2021 being weird because, uh, um, because this is actually because the gap had been narrower, I believe, before. I think it was shrinking until Corona or something. So median earnings here it is forty three, and here it's forty two. Yeah, it's just that um, 
2021 is specifically corona depressing ridership among um, the middle class. So I should probably go back and go to geos um, and see if I can find, okay, this is gonna be LA County, not LA City, but numbers should not be too different. So in LA County, uh, median earnings, 42 on car, 25 on transit. So actually, so yeah. Um, so you might notice it's not a very, a very big difference from LA City, just tw uh, the one year 2021. I imagine it's just the, um, the resolution is that Corona specifically killed a lot of middle class uh, transit ridership in not LA. Like in San, like San Francisco has been possibly permanently eviscerated by this, um, just because it's stuck. Um, but yeah, um, if there if people have questions, yeah, but if not, I can just cut this um, and make it uh, an hour, a bit of a recording, an hour 16. Um, I guess if you're watching on YouTube, you don't get to see the banter before I hit record. Um, so I so I like hitting record at even, no, at not even, round numbers. So 7, 10, 15, 20, and I did 7, 20. Uh, I end when I end, but um, it's just in case I am doing something wrong. Weird that it's giving me so many places. Not low end of us. Loss. Weird. This is just really weird. Do I need to? remove the county because remember that I did get to CLA one year so it's where they're all getting uh, is there any redeeming quality to this design to this thing as a next gen bus stop sign no just do a normal bus stop sign like this does not actually this does not add anything um, for one Note what is missing here, and that is a bus timetable. So they're not giving any static or dynamic timetable. Note that the dynamic timetable would be a digital sign, which is not something that is constrained at all by the uh, by sidewalk width or uh, by any kind of regulations or even by electricity supply, because I'm pretty sure the the light consumes more power. So this is just, they didn't think it was important to tell people when the next bus is gonna come, but it's fine. I mean, you can wait in what they think is shade for. Uh, I'm still uncertain as to why in California, they only have places that begin with A or B um, for the five years, but anyway, the. That's not that important, but. Uh, do any quantifications exist? Yep. Uh, it did not have any real, not just in real time, static. They don't even have static bus time table. Um, or let's say maps of the city. It is, it's a pretty normal thing in Berlin where every bus stop has a map of, has a street map. Um, I've used them to navigate. Um, do any quantifications exist on, but of negative effects? No, they're ours. Oh God. Oh God. Um, yeah, um, yeah, so I imagine the effect of ads on bus shelter is zero. So not really doesn't improve or detract from the experience. The issue is that it's just a giant expense, um, which yeah, in theory is recouped, but 
the difference between in theory and practice is in theory there's no difference. Um, and when you can't actually govern, people can tell that you can't govern. The assumption is that everyone has a smartphone with unlimited data to look at the timetable. Uh, sure. Um, remember what we just saw about the average income in LA? Um, like the, it's one of those things where there might actually be a substantial use, um, base of users of LA Transit who don't have data or don't have reliable data. There's something that you sometimes get with phone plans. Sometimes they scurry over with data. It's a, it's a thing in the United States. Um, and no one just even mean can't pay for it. It's just sometimes it, it's a, it's just bad customer service sometimes. So it's not fully, it, it depends. I mean, it, I mean, I mean, I will say that um, among younger low income people, everyone has a smartphone. Um, not just that, everyone had a smartphone la when I last asked about, um, when I last asked uh, a, a certain Newark inner city um, high school teacher, which was 2017. Um, yeah, exactly. It's, it, I mean, things always come up. Like you don't need, I mean, you don't need to rely on an outside, I mean, it's a, it's a useful thing. Um, I'm not saying you should kill your budget on Wi-Fi, but don't rely on just QR codes. It's not actually hard to do static timetables. At any rate, the static timetable should be good because you should not be fidgeting with the timetable too much. Um, just as a principle of good planning, because while the passengers may have Wi-Fi, the drivers do have places to be. Um, also old people, but I mean, like it's not, I mean, that's not the reason you don't do um, pure app. Like the, the, there, are, there are many other reasons not to do a pure app. Um, but yeah, it's, like it's just, it's, it's it, yeah. This is what you get when you have equity trolls or anything. I mean, but they said it's especially good for women, um, and in low-income neighborhoods. Um, but again, it's not just the equity trolls because the, the sort of people who talk about how this proves that it's impossible to build and you need wide sweeping reforms as opposed to just have the city spend a little bit and they emphasize how little of it of its own money to build instead of pretending it's going to recoup a large multiple of that cost through ads. Um, that is rather ridiculous. Um, but anyway, um, are there more questions? Awesome. Uh, do we have a big, well, I have a small one. Um, right, so thank you all for watching. Um, sorry I was late. I do appreciate it. Quite a lot of people were watching. And uh, yeah, I see. Oh, we'll see you again, hopefully Saturday, less hopefully another time, sometime next week. So thank you and uh, ciao, ciao.